Hey, it's Random Code here, and today we're going to continue working on our Spring Boot Crude application. In my last video, we set up this basic Spring Boot application we see here, and we showcased that we could connect Spring Boot, or more precise IntelliJ, to our database, like that. So we now know we have an active connection. We then set up our application properties to showcase, to point to our active database, given our username and password. The first thing I would then like to do to ensure it actually works is to look at my dependencies inside my pom.xml. And I have found that I need a few more dependencies. I still need Spring Boot Startup Web and Spring Boot Startup Test, but I will just replace everything just to make it a bit easier to ensure I do not forget anything. So now we have Spring Boot Starter, Spring Boot Startup Test, Spring Boot Startup GADPA, and Spring Boot Startup Web. And last but not least, MySQL connected job. I would then simply reload my Maven dependencies and we should now actually be able to have everything working. So let's first start by actually creating some basic structure for our program. So inside my comics backend, I would create a few packages. I would first create a controller, which we're not going to be using today because today we're only going to do the basic connections to the database and showcase that we can extract information from the database. But later on in the next videos, we're going to be creating some API endpoints inside our controller class or controller package. I will then also create our persistence. Persistence package, which is where we're going to have our entity, which is going to be matching the data in our database. And we're going to create a repository class interface, which then actually extracts data from our database. I will then also have a service class because we're going to create a setup where we have a repository extracting or matching data in our database. We then send this repository data to a service class, which then can manipulate the data if needed. And our APIs then again extract data from our services. And I would also need a model class. Because if we do it a bit more proper, we would actually like a setup where we have a Let's actually just do it. So inside persistence, I would first create a user entity like that. And it is just very simply going to be annotated with a entity and with a table because we're actually going to define a name of our table and a schema where our name is going to be our database table name. So that's going to be users. And our schema is going to be our user management database. Like that. And one other thing we might need, what we're always going to need is that is going to be complaining that we do not have an ID. So I've got an ID. And it's because we need to define for this users table, which is which one of the attributes are the primary key. So that's going to be our private integer ID. It's just the complaining. We can then do our private string name. I will then just duplicate it because we then need our email and our status. So we now have our users or matching our users table in a database, our user entity. I would then simply create some getters for this entity object. So now we can actually extract this entity object and then do whatever we want to do with it. Extract information. And we would then in a more proper scenario, and I think we're just going to do it just to showcase, we would then map our user entity to a user model because the user entity is only going to be like the exact information or exact setup matching in the database. But let me just showcase first that inside the system, we should also create an interface called user repository like that. And this is going to be annotated with repository. And it's going to be extending our JPA repository. And we're going to define that the connection to which table is it going to be connecting to. It is going to be connecting to our 
database matching user entity. And we then also need to define the primary key type, which is going to be integer. We can now then actually very simple create a abstract method that return user entity. And we then get user entity by ID and it give it a parameter of an integer ID. It now automatically maps to our database. So it knows it needs to extract the user entity. It knows that user entity matches of the user's table of the user management database. So we now actually have a working, hopefully, connection to the database. And this connection will then be made inside our user service. And then one thing to note, we are connected directly to it like this. It might not be the best way, but let's create a user service. So we now have a user service. We would like to annotate it using service, of course. And our user service is then going to have our user repository. And we would like to inject this using Spring Boot with Autowide using constructor injection. So now what would happen when our user service is created by the Spring Boot setup? We would then see that we need a user repository. We need it set up through our constructor, so constructor injection. And it then automatically gets any bean, or in this case, it would then get this repository and inject it so we can use it here. So we would then have a, let's just actually just make it very simple at first. So I would just simply print the console, my user repository dot get user entity by ID. And we know that the user entity we have in the table in the database has the ID one. So we can just strictly call on user entity by ID one. And let me actually just to make it a bit clearer. Just print a few lines above and below because it's going to be printed to the console where a lot of other stuff is going to be printed. But for now, we know that we have a user entity, user repository. We then, for now, just strictly take our user entity and print it to the console. We're going to actually have some problems because it's just going to be printing the position in memory of the object. So we'd actually like to, for example, do get name. So now what we are expecting is a setup where we to the console print hands inside these lines. So let's actually try running this program and see if it works. So we get a few informations and we see the lines and bam, boom, here we have hands. So we were able to create an entity matching the information inside our database then use this user repository to extract our, in this case, single user by ID. So this was just a showcase of how we can connect to our database, our MySQL database inside our Docker container, extract some information, and for now we just put it to the console. In the next video, we would then, maybe, I'm not quite sure yet, but we might map this data to a model object, where we might change, for example, this data, instead of being a string, we might change it into some kind of like enum value. And we would then take this model object, send it to our controller, and from our controller, we would then create an API. REST API, we would then get either, for example, get a single user by ID, or maybe some like get all users, and then later on, like delete users and update users. So I hope you enjoyed this showcase of how we can extract data from our database. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I wish you all a wonderful day.